This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel and welcome to LEGO 2K Drive. Now a lot of you are probably asking, why? Why are we doing this today? This is more arcadey, isn't it? First and foremost, I love arcade racers. I mean, huge Need for Speed fan. Love, you know, Crash Team Racing, Mario Kart. I have all sorts of different racing games, but we're doing this today because it's new and it's been, what, 20 years? Maybe not that long, but a very long time since a previous LEGO Racers game. So I am thoroughly excited to finally be coming back to my roots where, you know, Legos were a huge part of my childhood and just kind of getting back into the swing of enjoying a good arcade racer. I've been doing a lot of Gran Turismo recently, been doing a lot of like simulation racers. So it's about time that I come back and just have a good time. You know what I mean? So for those of you who have enjoyed games like Hot Shot Racing, I think this is exactly right up your alley. Just from the standpoint that it's kind of a nod to the previous retro arcade racers, literally arcade, like the ones that you would sit down at like your Dave and Busters and he had like the time clocks at the top. It's basically all that, but minus the clocks, I guess, or like, you know, that kind of stuff. But I mean, the idea of like, you know, the type of handling that it's using, uh, you know, with the addition of power ups and whatnot, it just has that retro arcade feel to it. And it's just, they did a really good job of it. So LEGO 2K Drive is, like I said, a huge nod to retro arcade racers. But on top of that, it brings a nod to previous kind of LEGO lines that are no longer with us. Like this car here is kind of our off-road racer, and it screams Tiny Turbos for those who used to uh, play that or play with those way back when. Uh, part of the other big thing about this game is its transformation. So depending on the surface that you're driving on, it just changes what type of car you're in. So now we're in like a weird little speedboat. Then like I was saying earlier, we're in a little off-road kind of car here. And then we go back to the road. And we've got kind of this, I don't know, muscly supercar looking thing. Convertible. So yeah, it's... Long story short, this game, I'm, we're probably not their target demographic, you know, being a bunch of 20 or 30 year olds. So this is definitely more kid based, kid focused. And I think we're kind of seeing like a little renaissance of Lego racers in general with the, with speed champions in general, because that's a huge selling point of this game where you can play as, you know, the McLaren F1 LM or the McLaren Solus GT. So I am very excited to get to unlock those cars and play those. And away we go. So our primary rival here for today is going to be the one and only Max Speed, who uh, in the credits there was saying that uh, his middle name is also Speed. So it's Max Speed Speed. Uh, this game also very interestingly enough is that like I was saying earlier, that there is a secondary audience, intended audience, should I say, is that some of the character writing is really humorous, where it's definitely breaking the fourth wall a little bit, which I love. Like the opening cinematic where it was, here's this guy in a big, like, hugely villainous looking car, and oh, by the way, here's our obvious villain! Like, honestly, I, I kid you not, that's basically what they said, and then there was the one of the main coaches where it's like, oh, I'm a retired ex, you know, race car driver who's going to be your life coach or whatever, which is very convenient for the plot. <laughs> <laughs> so it's as annoying as it is sometimes to have these hand holding tutorials, knowing that it's like not for you, knowing that it's for, you know, your kid or like a younger cousin or that kind of stuff. Uh, it is very humorous for you know, kind of the older audience. So yeah, this game in in actual gameplay definitely feels very Mario Kart-esque where you got a lot of these abilities that are coming out of nowhere. You don't really get a whole lot of notice when they're coming. And I'm just noticing now actually how cool this is because you are breaking stuff along the way. 
Uh, when you are breaking obstacles, you are adding parts back to your car. But as you're driving around, there are just parts scattered all over the track. And I think that's the nice thing about being in the 8th or ninth generation of consoles, are we now? I, I don't know offhand. But we've got enough processing power where we can just kind of leave parts along the track. And, like, you can come around next lap and they're still probably there. So, I don't know. Just, just these little details. And also, too, speaking of details, in a lot of the cinematics, you'll see the characters kind of, like, stuttering. They're not at, like, a fluid 60 frames a second. Well, LEGO knows their audience because, I mean, this cinematic is a little bit different, but in a lot of, like, the cinematic cinematic stuff, um, it's made to look like stop motion, which is actually really cool just from the standpoint that that's what a lot of, like, LEGO YouTubers are doing when they're doing, like, these more professional kind of LEGO videos, per se, where it is stop motion characters, so... Again, I do like some of these little subtle details. Um, so yeah, this is this is going to be a lot of fun. As you can tell, I'm already really enjoying myself here. So um, again, I might not post a lot of this on the channel, but man, am I really enjoying this. So the interesting thing here, because it is a Lego game, you actually do have a semi-intuitive little Lego creator here. They did discuss... A lot of the reviewers discuss that the interesting thing how this game works is how you modify your car actually adjusts how it performs. So if you make a creation that's like really top heavy, like you can feel that it wobbles around. But even cooler is that as you're racing and you're smashing into things, your car falls apart and that actively affects how your car handles, which I thought was amazing because a lot of people have discussed you can start with like a really heavy car purposely to bash into your opponents as you're really close to them on the grid but as you shed some of that weight your car performance picks up so there are actually some interesting strategies that you can pull off here where you can just have a really small nimble vehicle that is meant to just go fast or again make a heavy hitter where you can shed some of that weight and then increase performance that way but as far as what we're going to do here i'm going to see if we can Delete our spoiler here and see if I can make just a little bit of a new one here. It's going to be incredibly basic. And then we're going to go to color. We'll keep it kind of similar. So then we'll go over to, oh boy. Do kind of like a plate. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, I think I will just kind of leave it at that. Maybe fix it a little bit. So part of this game too is because it is an RPG in some fashion. Is that... You'll see, like I said, these little challenges out and about. And as I was discussing a little bit before, it is annoying when you don't get the challenges right. But there is something to keep in mind because it is an RPG. You do progress along the way. You do have to upgrade your car. You do have to upgrade some parts. You have to um, make sure that you're on the right track. You're going the right way. And over that time, you will eventually get better scores but again you do have to slowly methodically upgrade your car and, and tune it in such a way where it's okay for this challenge I want something that's a little bit faster on uh, this track uh, I need something more off-road focused so I'll adjust the performance settings on my off-road car or if it's something more water based well we gotta adjust our little boat you know that kind of stuff so as annoying as it is when you're going through for the first time that you're not getting all these challenges at 100%, uh, it just takes a little bit of time. So that adds quite a bit of replayability. I mean, yeah, you can go through and you can get bronze medals every time, uh, but it does bring you back to doing, you know, I think we're in C-class technically with what we're at for level. And then you got to go back and you got to do B class, you got to do A class. So already there seems to be quite a bit of uh, replayability 
over the time that he played this. So I think I'll actually try to get this on my Steam Deck and just kind of play as I go. And I'll let you guys know probably a little bit later if uh, it works well for the Steam Deck or not, I guess. And if the different types of events kind of get repetitive after a while or if it's, you know, actually pretty decent. So I haven't played enough to be able to establish an opinion yet. So I'll try to keep you guys posted on that. All right. So we're at nighttime in the infinite loop. And already we're seemingly getting a pretty decent start as all of our opponents have decided to try taking each other out i am just being wrecked right now as <laughs> yeah I was, I was gonna say these cars are a lot bigger than mine so i might have to go change that in a little bit so mine's at least a little bit more competitive But at the same time, too, being small and nimble might actually be uh, an advantage here. All we got to do really is beat Dr. Fastro. Let's see if we can keep our noses clean here. Make a little jump here. That did not work in my favor. <laughs> so apparently using the jump function at the top of a jump really just kills all momentum. So that, that was... Horrifying, to say the least. There we are. Get a little bit of some gun action going there. Trying to move our way through the glass, grass. Oh, there we are. Final lap, first place. Ooh, that was a great usage of that spider web. That's the shield that we can use, and it looks like Dr. Fastro is a little bit behind us. Let's see if we can make our way. There we go. Nice. First place. Four flags. That would be... That might actually be kind of fun to drive. <laughs> Have a really kind of like both sides of the spectrum just tiny little turbo tiny turbo and then this giant moon space rover oh man so all in all at the end of the day how do i feel about this game well first and foremost 60 bucks for a lego game you know in this day and age because of rampant inflation and all the rest of it I think it actually is a pretty decent deal. You are getting a lot more than what the previous LEGO games had to offer, where it was like Brick Tales, and then there's like the Builder's Journey and whatnot. Those, are, I think, were a little bit steeply priced for what they were, which was like really incredibly short tech demos, if I'm honest. But this game here looks like it is a fully fledged game where there's like quite a bit of playability where there's a lot of interactive environments. There's a bunch of story to go through. There are a lot of challenges and events to go through. And it's just, all in all, it's a really fun game. So I really hope that you guys would be able to pick this up as well. Would love to be able to try out the online environment. I think this would be a lot of fun to play kind of there. So this is kind of my quick little review of LEGO 2K Drive, 2K Drive. So this is kind of my little review of LEGO 2K Drive. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, again, depending on uh, your guys' thoughts, this may be a series that we continue. But as of right now, I'm okay just kind of showing this off a little bit here today. So again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.